Tôi mong cái chết của mình có thể khởi đầu trong một cuộc cách mạng mới Nhưng không Điều duy nhất có thể cứu rỗi linh hồn tôi Là biến bản thân mình trở thành khởi nguồn cho những thay đổi Để bắt đầu một cuộc cách mạng Để giải thoát những con vật khác khỏi cái số phận đau đớn như tôi từng chịu Tôi là con tê giác cha và cuối cùng ở Việt Nam con tê giác cha va cuối cùng cho nước liền ở châu Á Chúng tôi đã tuyệt chủng Nhìn mình thật khó coi Nhất là khi thân thể chẳng còn gì ngoài một phiên bản cứng đơ với một cái mũi dị hộp Thà họ cứ để nguyên hộp sọ sức sẹo như một gợi nhớ về sự điên rồ của con người Có thể vì vậy mà người phương Tây gọi việc xưa mũi là rhinoplasty Tên tiếng Anh của tôi là Rhino Tên khoa học là Rhinoceros Sonicus Anamiticus How do you produce your films in Vietnam today? Have, do you have help from the state or do you need European funding? I have to say it's a tricky situation here especially for artists like myself who aren't entirely working in the cinema system um there is no there is no support here from the government the kind of c- cinema industry began to change drastically uh in about 2005 um there's still a very tight censorship system censoring system i'm not able to show much here mm-hmm. I'm an independent producer. Uh, I, I usually produce everything myself and I'll try to find money however I can. My films are really low budget. Um, and I often show outside of Vietnam. Two weeks ago in Paris, I saw a show in the Centre Pompidou where the Propeller Group, which uh, you had, uh, you, I think you co-founded it in 2006, um, participated, and the show was called Resistance. Resistance against what? You know, that's a good question. I um, I don't know if I can speak on behalf of the curators of the show, but I can speak on behalf of <clears throat> the group and uh, my own individual practice. Uh, I, I believe resistance is, it, it takes many forms. Um, and it's resistance to many different things at many different times. Most, most of the time in my practice, um, the film works that I've been making recently, resistance has been about a resistance of erasure. Um, it is a resistance to the erasure, the systemic erasures that have been applied during the colonial era. Um, there's a lot of stories and historical moments that and and cultural identities that have been systematically for hundreds of years been neglected and um so this this act of retelling stories for me is is an act of resistance um against against those erasures talking about your film the island where you where which is about uh <laughs> an official monument, but which has disappeared since. Can you, uh, can you say, explain with some words? Because it, it, it's, it's also, the, it shows a memory or a monument, a symbol for memory, and which is related to a certain time and an era and a, and a political power. Right, so I got very fascinated um, You know, when I was growing up as a child of immigrants, uh, the official, the the unofficial term for what my family and I were, were the boat people. So at at the end of the Vietnam War in 1975, there was a mass migration of Vietnamese who left Vietnam, mostly by boat, mostly by way of ocean, um, to to gain some sort of safety post-war away from the country. So one of the landing places 
for many of these refugees who escaped by boat was this island off of the coast of Malaysia called Pulau Budong. And the island kind of gained some sort of mythological kind of status uh, over the years. It became the largest and longest running refugee camp after the Vietnam War. I grew up hearing stories about Pulau Budong as if it was a person, as if it was personified as a deity. Um, and I, I was kind of quite intrigued my whole life since I was a kid about this island. Um, and then I happened to be in Malaysia in 2015. And so I thought, wait a minute, I can, I can just drop by this island. So I, I, I visited the island and I became engrossed in its kind of physical, current physical attributes. It's overgrown. There's all these amazing relics there. And before I had, had come to the island, I, I, I found some, some newspaper articles online about a monument that was erected in 2000, uh, I think it was 2006, I believe, um, for, where formal, former refugees of the island who go on this pilgrimage to return to the island, they erect a monument to commemorate all the refugees during that era. And they, in, in this monument, they give thanks to all the people that give help and aid to refugees during that time. It was a modest monument. It stood about maybe uh, two meters and 50, 2.5 meters tall. Um, and six months after they had erected this monument, it was destroyed. And um, because this is a narrative that is not accepted by the dominant narrative here, um, there was pressure by the government here, given to the Malaysian government, to destroy the monuments. Con người tạo nên thần thoại để lấp đầy những lỗ hổng lịch sử. Người Việt Nam tin rằng họ được tạo nên từ hai vị thần. Một ngày, nàng tiên âu cơ từ trên đỉnh núi đi xuống. Nàng bất ngờ bị tấn công bởi thủy quái. Nhưng nàng đã được cứu bởi lạc lòng quân, bùa rộng từ dưới biển lên. Hai người yêu nhau và đẻ một bọc có một trăm trứng, nở ra một trăm người con. Sau đó, âu cơ đưa năm người con lên núi. Năm mươi người con theo cha xuống biển trở lại. Và đó là nguồn gốc của người Việt Nam. Một câu chuyện về điềm báo của quá khứ dành cho tương lai. Và có vẻ như chúng ta chưa bao giờ thoát được vòng xoáy của sự chia cắt và di cư. So I started kind of visiting the island every now and then and, and kind of started kind of, you know, immersing myself in, into the, 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 the presence of the island. And I started kind of researching and talking to people about the stories uh, that they had on the island. So I started to develop a film um, where the island is this, this space, but it's far, far in the future at the end of the world to kind of think about what, what, what do spaces like these and what do kind of relics like these that are left by us, what do they mean? at a time where there's a, there might be a crisis in existence, a human crisis. We were talking about the end of the world, the end of the human existence. What does it all mean then at that time? You use the monument as a symbol of uh, uh, a memory, to, but you projected it into the future. Yeah, so the film actually is a combination of um, a lot of archival footage and a lot of home kind of home videos that I, that I was able to find. Um, and, it, and it's about two people at the end of the world. One is a man who was born on the island, and he's now, he thinks he's the last man on earth because he hasn't seen anybody in forever. Suddenly, one day, a woman washes ashore. And the story unfolds where that 
the woman is a scientist and she actually witnessed the end of the world, the last nuclear, um, the last nuclear uh, uh, battle on the oceans. And then so the conflict between the two characters becomes about do they stay and protect the island and take care of the island as the man has been doing all his life alone? Or do they leave and try to restart humanity? So one person is looking to the future. Cứ có người đến hoặc đi thì đạo hát bài này. Ngày mai em đi biển như tên em gọi mẹ, gọi hồn liêu du lê thế, gọi bờ cát trắng đêm kia. Ngày mai em đi đôi núi nghiêng nghiêng đời chờ, soi đá trong em từng giờ. about people it is more into the fiction and into the formal uh very very cinema like style yeah actually for me the boat people is kind of i don't i don't know if documentary is the right word but it is grounded in in um in a real geography a real a real place um, and it actually explores the kind of remnants of the history of Bataan, this island uh, in the Philippines, which has seen immense trauma over the last, you know, over, over the recent history, uh, in the recent history of our time. Um, World War II, uh, Japanese invasion, there is this uh, historical event called um, the Death March, where thousands of men who were captured by Japanese soldiers were marched to their deaths. Um, Bataan was also another landing site of Vietnamese refugees. Um, there's a refugee camp there called the PRPC. Although the narrative is really set uh, also 
in the future at the end of the world um and the and the, and the narrative is kind of very kind of fictionalized it's actually kind of grounded in the objects that these children the the main protagonist in the film interact with um so it's very much about those objects uh as a matter of fact the main character in the film actually engages in a conversation with one of the objects um a literal conversation with an object um the the severed statue head of of a monument um so so for me it's very much based on the the history of bataan even though it's set in the future it kind of wraps its head around that history that specific site and those very specific histories And why is it uh, because there is a the boat people is a group of of children, uh, and why is it the little girl which gets into dialogue and and talks to to the head? Why is it the why just girl? the little girl? Yeah, why she why she? I I think it was a way of reimagining of of imagining uh, a different kind of world. As we move forward in the future, um, to kind of re-situate re -situate, um, you know, the different positions of power, and I, I, I thought it was kind of quite interesting to kind of imagine this girl as the savior of humanity um, and and the power that she holds. Uh, in 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 being the last woman on earth you, if that you, makes any sense <laughs> i understand it was it was the right question because it made you think why you choose that girl What are you? Ako? Ako ay isang malalakbay. How did you find this place? Isa akong malalakbay. Marami na akong nahanap na lugar. You're talking a lot about the end of the world. Why? I think that if we're able to kind of shift our understanding of our present just a little bit, um, we can maybe possibly begin to imagine something else. And I think that time, that very precarious time at the end of humanity, which is, is maybe not so far off, um, is a time that we can actually start to re really reconsider um, 
the meaning of our existence as a species, but as, as individuals as well.